everybody. Welcome back to Scrawl School Episode 5. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about this cool little heater right here from AC Infinity that goes perfect with that tent that I set up last week. This thing is pretty sweet, so we're going to unbox this. Uh, we're also going to be going over um, some seedlings here that I've been starting. They're a little bit past the seedling stage. I say they would be like young, young veg now. Uh, we'll be transplanting them in a few days from now, but I couldn't do it live today because they're just they're just not quite ready. But they will be in a couple days. So um, everybody, just sit back, grab your bongs, grab your joints, roll them up if you got them, and enjoy the episode. Nice. Okay, so first I want to give everybody a quick seedling update. Uh, these things, I feel like they've been growing slow, but they really they haven't been. I've just been impatient looking at them every day, like she would probably be too if you have your seedlings on the go. So this is them right now. Um, this one right here is probably pretty much close. I can almost transplant that one, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get them probably like two or three more days in these solo cups and the bud cups. And uh, and they'll be ready. Some are smaller, some are taller, but they're all different sizes and shapes. But in a couple months from now, you won't even be able to tell. They'll just, now is the time when these things are all just pretty much going to blow up on us and just start really growing. Uh, the cool thing with the bud cups is you can kind of like slide up, slide the cup up and see the roots. But I'm not going to do that, but you can kind of go up in there. We'll do that next week for a transplant. I'll slide it up and show you how easy it is to transplant with these bud cups. They make it pretty sweet. So, like I said, we got some Gorilla Cookies here, Nutter Butter from Homebolt. The Gorilla Cookies is a 420 Fast Buzz strain. We got the GMO Bomb, which is Atlas Seeds. We got the Sour Brie Mix, which is uh, Chilogene Seeds. Um, what else have we got in here? We got the Tangerine Snow, which is, uh, this is the new Seedsman, one of the, one of the new Seedsman genetics right here, Tangerine Snow. This is a nice one. Happy Girl. Okay, but this Gorilla Cookies looks like it's just, she's taken off huge. So I'm excited to run them. The GMO bomb looks really actually bomb. It looks like it's going to be super frosty. Lots of huge trichome production. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for plants that right now that have like a lot of trichome production. So I'm going to be making hash. That's my plan here is to make hash. I have a couple more on the side here that I'm starting. Just a couple seedlings. Uh, we've got the purple punch over there. I have a few different strains from Green Bodhi, a couple new ones that he hasn't really put out that, it hasn't put them out that much yet, but I have a few of them called Ancient Aliens. Uh, there's a few of them in there, so I might just have those plants like laid out around my room in certain spots, like not even necessarily scrogging them. I'll just have like a, say a five gallon bud pot or, a, or one of these like big bags right here from Pro Mix. I could just have one of these bags just sitting in my room somewhere and it's there's enough light in here that the plant doesn't need to be directly underneath the light to grow if you guys watch scraw school season number three i grew a few plants that just sat in the aisles of my grow space they just sat in the aisles and they collected tons of light and they actually flowered beautiful one of them was the hazy girl and it was like a really nice looking plant um yeah, in this episode, we're going to be going over a few things. At first, I wanted to just unbox this heater right here. I'm not going to be using this heater right now because I'm already done my seedling stage. But for the for future reference, this thing's going to be really nice, especially if you live in like a damp, not live, but if you're growing in like a damp, cold basement, this heater right here is going to help you out so much. This is going to keep that space nice and warm for you. This necessarily will not heat a space that I'm standing in right now. You can't buy this and expect to heat the heat this space but you can buy something like this and expect to heat that tent that i'm going to show you guys here in a second again once i set this up this thing is really straightforward uh let's get into it so i'm going to do this one live there's not a lot to it i think there's just like a few plugs in it 
Okay. Okay, so it definitely connects to the UIS system, so you can connect this to your controller, and you can control this heater from on your boat. You can control this heater like if you're like just on a trip traveling. You can go into your Wi-Fi, say, "Holy shit, it's too hot in there," or it needs more heat in there. This is the hose that's extendable. Okay, look how look how much that extends, which is pretty nice. So. I'll show you guys how I would run it in my room and then you guys can do what you want to do with it if you ever have them. But if this is my space, this is what I would do with it. I'm about to show you now. So it also comes with those nice booklets that pretty much teach you how to grow. Basically right there, you read that book and you're going to be pretty much good at almost growing plants. You're just going to have to practice a few times. And like I said earlier in, uh, in the AC After Dark show the other day, practice makes better because there's no such thing as perfect right so instructions obviously have, have a read with them i'm just going to pull it right out of here it's actually super light i thought it would be a lot heavier than that but it's not which is good So like the thing that I noticed about AC Infinity, you guys have been seeing me like almost unbox a product every week of Scrog School so far. I do some kind of unboxing, reveal of AC Infinity products. The thing that I noticed about AC Infinity products is the ease of setting things up. They make it so like, they make it so easy. For the most part, everything is really easy on how to set all the, this stuff up. So here's the cord. Okay, plugs right in. So you're gonna unravel this cord. And what I just noticed on this cord, it comes off the bottom, but they're smart, right? So what camera are we on here? So they made a little notch right there so that the cord can go in there and you can still set your unit flat. So that's kind of cool. Like, I think that's, that's thought. Like somebody put thought into their product, right? They could have had the cord just wrapped up here on the side and, and send it off but no they make it so like you can, it's a super long cord first of all so i can have it however long i need it so if i only need it like say four feet and i'm gonna gonna put it four feet put it through that little slot done there now i have a four foot cord so it's almost like pretty handy that way all right so what else I haven't read the instructions I just opened this thing up so uh, just by looking at it it's pretty basic this is the screen that we'd be looking at take off the nice plastic shell okay okay so this is cool so not only do they have this hose that extends a lot but they also have another hose that extends a lot so that's two that's like well let's just connect them up and see what we got here that's like crazy <laughs> like man you're not gonna need more than that that's for sure you know like that's pretty cool so I'm actually, what I'm going to do though, is, well, that connection is pretty tight too. I'm going to put it back down in place. Feels pretty durable too. It's a pretty durable slinky here. And then I'm going to put it back in its little holder that it was in. I'm going to put this one back in place. Okay. This thing also has 10 different heat settings. So like, it doesn't come on at full blast. It comes on like, you can have it at two, three, and then you just dial in, you just dial it in. It comes with this nice thermostat, um, a good thermostat that's gonna tell the temperature in your little tent. But I'm gonna set up my tent right now because my tent's small. It's one of those nice propagation system tents from AC Infinity 2. So I can set it right on this table. So this is what I would do with my situation.
cameras are right now. Okay, so I would have this one sitting here just like this. I'm just gonna come down with this cam, just a touch. That. Okay. Pick up the unit. I could set it right on my table right down here on the it has like okay. It actually has like I just noticed that by setting it on my hard table. I want to make reference to this. It has like nice soft rubber little feet. Right there. Those things are like when I set it down, I was like, wow, this feels like really really sturdy or something like really like I don't know how to say it but it just it just sits on there snug and it's not gonna move it's not gonna flop anywhere okay I wonder if I'm long enough just for this one no I'm gonna have to add the extension All right, so the thing about this tent, it has two spots to tighten hoses, vents, anything going in or out. It has two spots to actually tighten them in. So I can tighten in there, then also tighten in right here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my cell phone cam here for a second. So, all I gotta do is plug it in. I'm not gonna plug it in, but yeah, you just gotta plug it in. The thing's gonna come on multiple vent holes and holes in this tent, so you can run hoses, run vents, which is nice. So now I have the heat in this one. The cool thing about this system is AC Infinity also does the exact same thing for the humidifiers. They also have a flexi hose that comes off and you can put that on this side or on the back side or you can put it on the top side. Because with that damp air, it's gonna come in, it's gonna fall down on the plants. The heat, the hot air is gonna come in and it's gonna rise up, hot air rises. So you definitely wanna put this in the lowest one because um, it's like gonna come up and come through your plants and slowly fill the tent. Usually I recommend people to put their exhaust in the top. You don't really want your exhaust in the bottom because you want your exhaust to be sucking out all the hot and stale air that's up in your ceiling space. Um, that's what you wanna do with the exhaust. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. So now I can like, if this was my system, I'm on a table. I got, this is just how I would do it. I have my plug long enough so I can actually move it around my room now. I'm like, oh, they're putting propagation system over here, a bunch of seedlings in there. Meanwhile, this room's all has flowers in it because like I might want this tent to be a little bit warmer than I want my room that's actually flowering. I want my flowering room to be a bit cooler, right? But I want my, this, I have seedlings or something in here. Who knows what I, I could have in there? But I want this to be a little bit warmer and have more humidity in here. So I just plug up this little heater, put up my humidifier in here, boom, close the tent, dial it in, all set. Now I have this system in here, I'm running on different temperature and humidity. Then my full room is at a different temperature and humidity. So I think that's pretty sweet. And look how easy that setup was. And during this episode, guys, we have, well, we have two, AC Infinity giveaways and then one in the in the comments for after the video but oh I didn't want you to do that yet <laughs> okay well there you go type in ACI in the live comment sections for your chance to get in on a, one of the $100 gift card giveaways that we're doing uh, this episode and you could use that to buy one of these awesome heaters or you can use that to buy one of these awesome propagation tents. Plus, 420 is coming up and AC Infinity is having a huge sale. So you could use these $100 gift cards. Plus, you could stack them with the code SCROG. And that would save another 10%. So you'd be saving, like, first of all, 420 is having a 10% sale as it is. You use the code SCROG. That's another 10%. That's 20%. Plus, you could get this $100 gift card. I'm giving away two of them during the episode. One in the comments at the end. You're laughing. So... Good luck to at least two people in tonight's episode and one person in the comments afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna put this thing right here and get this tent off of here. Cause I feel a little bit claustrophobic with everything around me at the moment. I'll move things a bit. I'll have a quick drink. Okay.
so yeah, that was things pretty awesome. Q and A, guys. All you gotta do is ask questions in the live chat right now, and Ali's gonna pick them out, and she's gonna star them for me. Then I come over to the screen eventually here, and I just click through them, and I can see like if you have any questions. So here's one right here. Do you ever bench the whole screen before you flip? Uh, I, I I used to like when I was young, I tried doing that a few times, but I learned real quick that that is how you like. That is how I would screw up my straw, to be honest with you. Because, like, unless I'm prepared for it. Like, if you're prepared for it, you already have a double screen. Like, I am prepared in all my straw frames here. As you can see, we have the, like, the four-way tees in the top. Just in case my branches go above, I can put another second layer of a scrog screen or a trellis at that point to hold the branches secure, right? Uh, the first layer is scrog. The second layer would always be, like, a trellis for support. Uh, that's the difference between scrog growing and trellis growing. Trellis growing is a way to support and separate your branches. Scrogging is actually use the screen to actually keep your branches underneath it. Uh, there's a, there is a difference between trellis growing and scrogging. Um, sometimes like scrogging gets lost and gets lost. You know, like some people think like scrogging is trellis growing, which is fine. That, but like that's there is a different art to this. Um, to scrogging compared to trellis growing and people really quickly find out like some people learn how to trellis grow and they think they're scrogging and then they watch like straw school or they see somebody from straw school that starts to scrog real nice and then they, they're like holy shit that looks a lot different than what i do i thought i was scrogging and then they see like someone else like holy shit you know like so there is a difference between the two that's for damn sure um what else so yeah we, do we get the type in the aci so, okay, so anyways, so yeah, I don't fill my full screen because I just, I want my colas to be like six or eight inches off the screen. That's what I aim for. I aim for my colas just to have a nice flat, even canopy. Usually if you fill your screen 100%, you're not going to be able to control your canopy at that point because once your screen is completely full and you flip the flower, your stretch is unpredictable. Some branches are going to stretch more than the other branches. The next thing you know, your screen is all like, it's just branches everywhere, okay? But if you... If you control it and you flip with like 20% left in your screen and you flip and you tuck during that stretching phase, then you will be able to, um, uh, you'll be able to control your canopy better because you'll have space in your screen still to continue tucking and fill in and fill the rest of that canopy out. So some branches, like I said, are not going to stretch as much as others. But if you have enough space in your screen, you can keep on tucking that stretchy branch Sometimes, which you will see during this season, my branches will reach the outside of my scrog frame. Okay, like the, uh, man, I got to pull out the little, the little midget scrog frame more often. Okay. Sometimes the plants will reach the outside of your scrog frame. Okay. Like this one here. Say, say my hand's a branch. Oh, I reached the outside. Now what? If these ones over here haven't yet reached the outside, you can train this branch to start growing sideways now along the outside, along the, <laughs> along the outside of the screen, right? So it coming this way, turn it, tuck, 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 keep on tucking it this way now, train it. Eventually colas will all grow off that branch separately, which is cool. So yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely try not to fill my screens 100%. Um, to be honest, lately I find myself flipping sooner and sooner within my screen limits. Like sometimes I'll flip at like 50% now because plants seem to stretch a lot. Uh, plants seem to grow bigger now. It's probably to do with the breeding into plants. People want big plants, right? So now like people are breeding big plants. So I might even lower how to like, how long it takes to like, I might even be like flip your screens at like 60% full. Because like I've been learning on my living soil bed that I can't control it. To be honest with you, I, I have not yet had a, except for on my three by three, I had a really nice scrog on there actually with my Gelat 41 VX. But with this four by four living soil bed, I haven't been able to control it yet. To be honest with everybody, like I'll flip the flower and it'll fill that screen and it will stretch and it will just be like, what the hell? It'll be stretching for like, like a month and a half or something sometimes and i don't get it like and it's not just the one strain it's been two strains this is gonna be my third grow with this living soil bed and both grows that I, both i've done in it have been just huge monster beautiful plants and like <laughs> i wasn't aiming for it i'm aiming for like a nice even canopy nice beautiful colas but the living soil is just a whole different animal 
or something. Like, plus, it's a whole big bed, so it has all the roots have a lot to travel. And I only grow one plant in that thing. Speaking of the living soil bed, uh, let's watch a little video of me washing washing my cover crop. I had to wash the cover crop this week. Um, for example, I have sometimes I have some fungus gnats flying around in here, but now I found a product. I've been using a product that has definitely knock them out a lot um i still see them floating around here once in a while but that is with living soil like i see one right now flying around in the lights but i'm telling you this product works really well so let's watch that video right now hey everyone today we are going to be doing a plant wash on my cover crop i'll be using a product called ipw from athena and in the united states this product is called ipm uh, this stuff is perfect for uh, pest management and even powdery mildew control. It can be used in the seedling stage right to the harvest stage. Um, it's best to be used for the vegetation phase even up to three weeks in the flower. Because normally three weeks in the flower you're still just growing leaves. There's not much bud on the plant yet. So this is a perfect to go into three weeks of flower. Um, it's going to remove dust off the leaves, helping with photosynthesis. That will increase the, the optimal growth of your plant. How this works is, if you want to do like preventative maintenance, like no pests at all in your garden, you just want to prevent stuff, then you're going to be spraying about 15 to 24 milliliters per liter. And you'll do that two times per week. You'll see me using this product throughout the grow. Um, I'm not using it on my canvas plants yet because I just don't have any in the spot that I'm spraying right now. Um, but eventually I'll be using this on my plants throughout the room. I'll be spraying under the leaves, above the leaves. Also, if you have just some pests, you're going to want to be using 24 to 32 milliliters per liter. And you're going to want to spray that three times per week. Okay. Also, lastly, if you have an infestation of bugs in your room, normally soft shelled bugs, I'm talking like thrips, uh, fungus gnats, uh, aphids, things like that spider mites you're going to want to put in 32 milliliters per liter and spray two days on and one day off so that means you're going to be spraying day one day two then you're going to skip day three and then you're going to repeat for nine more days this stuff is actually amazing i i had a little bit of a fungus gnat myself problem i sprayed this stuff and it's been really working great for me This is a complete powdery mildew management, which is pretty awesome. So it controls powder mildew. It's a killer of it, and it's also a cure. So if you see powder mildew on your plants during the early veg stage, you can spray this stuff, and it's going to control, kill, and cure it. So there's a few things that it covers is spider mites, broad mites, mole crickets, aphids, two spotted spider mites, red spider mites, mosquito larvae, uh, chiggers, south red mites, thrips, European red mites, white fly, fungus gnats, powdery mildew, downy mildew. Okay, this is not a foiler feed. This is just a plant wash. Um, if you want to do the foiler feed with the Athena product, you use the product called Stack. Mine is in the mail. It hasn't come yet or else I'd be using it with this product. So I'll have the Stack soon. And with those two, you can mix them together. As soon as you spray this and it hits contact, it will kill it. It dissolves the pest protective membrane. It dries it out completely pests cannot build up resistance to this kind of a product which is pretty awesome so what you can do you can also you can just spray the top of your leaves the bottom of your leaves but you can also do something called a root drench which means that you're going to actually direct the water right into the right below your plants and just right into the soil you just want to get the roots drenched in this stuff and the smell and the organic compounds in this product is natural oils and it deters pests from the plant surface so the plants aren't going to come back once you spray this on there the plants just don't like the smell of it they don't like the oils of it they just leave one thing you want to do when you're spraying your plants is definitely turn off your high intensity led lights so what i do is now that i have this nice green work light from ac infinity i'm just going to turn on my green work light so i can still see kind of what i'm doing i'm going to go ahead and spray my plants this is perfect. This green light is going to help it so it doesn't burn my plants, but I can still see what I'm doing. 
if I had the LED lights on, I I can potentially burn my plants when I spray any kind of product on the leaves. It's also good to try to keep your humidity down to around like say 50 to 60 percent during this stage, and keep your heat like in the 70s because you just don't want it too hot and too humid um, as you apply this. All right, guys, sweet. Thank you for watching. I really, I really strongly recommend that you guys get this product if you have any problem with any kind of pests in your room or you just want to have some wicked preventative maintenance regarding pests. To be honest, I wish I knew about this product, say, last year or even the year before because I went out and I purchased a lot of money worth of beneficial bugs, predatory bugs that I really didn't even need. I just needed a bottle of this IPW and I'm laughing. The good thing about it is that it keeps my beneficial bugs still alive it just kills off those those um unwanted bugs that we don't want sorry i was on mute there anyways yeah so that's, that's what I said. That's the IPW and IPM in the United States, IPW in Canada. Like I said, it's my first time using this product. And so far, so good. It, it actually smells really good too. Um, I know there's so many ways of doing this. Just like there's so many ways of growing a plant, so many techniques to use. Uh, it's a preference thing. Uh, there's like some people use neem oil for this, right? And ne neem oil is hard to find for us in Canada. I don't even think you can find any more in Canada, actually. Well, I couldn't. Um, I used a few different different products to get rid of these things and, and try to get rid of fungus gnats. That's only been my only pest that I've had in here. And so far, to be honest with you, that product right there has worked the best so far. Um, I tried a few different things, like I mentioned that video. All right, Ali, let's do the one. Let's do one ACI giveaway right now. So ACI in the ACI in the live chats, guys for your chance to get in on this giveaway. It's a $100 gift card that you can use. And I say you would use it on 420 because they're gonna have a sale on 420. So you might as well use it on 420 and, and like get a good sale. Tyler Binning. Man, congratulations. You need to you need to um, email ace or giveaways at acinfinity.com to claim this prize. You also need to take a screenshot of your YouTube profile page. Uh, congratulations, man. That's an awesome that's an awesome package. Hundred dollars AC Infinity. You they can put some money towards that and buy something like real good, right? So congratulations. That's awesome. What else do we get into? Oh yeah, detention tonight on Discord. We do detention on Discord after every episode of Scroll School. So that's over at the Scroggers Discord channel. Ali's gonna try to post the link, but we don't have it on that computer, so she might not get to the link. If someone in the side chats has a link of that, that'd be great. But we'll be going over to uh, the Discord for detention after Scroll School tonight. For next week, guys, we're gonna be doing transplanting and stuff, 100%, because these plants, they're, like I said, they're a few days out. So we're gonna be transplanting next week. The following week, we're going to be doing the early training. After, right after that would be early training the following week. And then it's going to be tucking. So this is when the show is really going to start taking off. It's pretty much next, next episode. I'm going to show you how to pretty much work on plants. Like I said, the transplant. I'll make a nice video. on. I know most of the people in here know how to transplant, know how to germinate. You guys all, like, I'm not saying that everyone in here is, like, a rookie, right? But there is. There's a lot of rookies that don't know how to grow. They don't even know how to, like, pop a seed. So I, I try to explain things like the people that don't know how to pop the seed. But I know most of you in the chat are, are experienced growers and probably, like, you know what I mean, right? So next week we'll be transplanting, make a nice video explaining how I do it. Um, there's not not too many different ways of doing this technique. Transplanting is transplanting. So like if you have a special way to transplant, then that's pretty cool. But yeah, um, after that, it takes like I'd say three or four days for the plants to start kind of taking off from the transplant. And then I can start doing my early training. One of these plants here, I feel like I can start doing some early training already on it. But I am gonna wait till I transplant and just do it all right with my bud huggers and my and my clips tied down to the sides of my pots. Uh, we're gonna be doing that for this full month. 
and then we'll be putting a screen on the plants. So it's going to be coming pretty quick here. Uh, this is the time that I like. Uh, I like the time when I start using my hands and working on the plants. And I'm, I'm pretty, I'm getting really excited for that. All right, let's ask, uh, let's answer some questions here. Um, did you get 100% germination? I did get 100% germination, but I didn't get 100% like um, my seeds taking off. I actually had a few that I think it was my fault. I actually overwatered a, a few of these cups right here. Uh, that, that's why I think they're a little bit slower than they normally were for me. Because it's, to be honest with you guys, I, I'm used to growing in a solo cup. Okay, so I have a solo cup here. This is a little trick I can talk to people about too. So I have a solo cup here and I have <clears throat> this bud cup here, okay? This bud cup is a lot heavier than the solo cup. And I've been growing for years seedlings with solo cups. So I kind of got used to that weight of a solo cup. The bud cup full of the bud cup full of dirt was a little bit heavier dry, right? So I, I kind of thought like I kind of like messed up thinking like there was too much water at one point because it felt heavy and then, so then I put a lot of water in and then like I kind of screwed up. Um, but not all of them. I have a lot here that I kept going. Probably like two or three plants I I just put too much water in. And I'm lucky that most of them pulled out of it um, because that would have sucked if I killed everything. <laughs> But you know, shit happens. So I'm just lucky that I got some strong genetics here, and like some of them pulled through that heavy watering, and, and I didn't. I knew. I knew now, like holy shit, these are heavy, and they're small. Like I just, I can't do anything. So I just, le I just left them alone. And uh, honestly, I didn't. I didn't add any water for like a full week. I just let them do their thing and just sit there and, and slowly just start growing. And now they caught up. I actually had to add water today. I watered them fully today. I uh, gave them a nice full watering. This is what I do with seedlings sometimes um, when they're nice and small and, and young. Like this one here. So nice little seedling. This is like just a, I think it's like a couple days, not even. Uh, what is this? This is a purple punch. This is a purple punch seedsman strain. So I put a baggie over top. First, I spray with my spray bottle in here. Let's just do it. This is how I. This is how one of the ways I would start seedlings. I put my, I put the seed right in the cup. Okay, I don't even germinate it sometimes. This one I put right directly in the soil. I leave enough room that once my seedling stretches above the cup, I can add more soil to my cup, and then therefore hold my seed straight. I don't like put in all the soil at first and then put my seed in because once it stretches, <clears throat> it's just going to fall over. So I just put in this much soil, put the seed in. Once the seed stretches above the cup, I backfill, put my soil to the cups. So now I just have the head of the seed sticking out. <clears throat> and then they and they usually just turn out to be like nice little like nice little plants. But they still stretch a bit even even doing that. When I transplant these when I transplant these plants, I'll be going at least that deep with it. Like right to here. I'll fill it fill it just have like this much sticking out. All of this is going to grow roots. As soon as I transplant it and get this in the dark, in a damp space, it's going to start growing roots. So that's what I will do. Right now I have a little fan that blows on my seedlings a little bit. It just, just enough to kind of just move them a little bit. And, and that's going to make them kind of like work out, get them strong. Uh, th that's, that encourages growth in a plant for it to sometimes just get a little bit of a wave that sends that sends signals to the roots to start like planting yourself get strong because like i'm getting moved around up here and like i want to be a big plant so i want you guys to be really stabilized down there and just start 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 growing roots everywhere if i had my plants in a in a super still environment with no air movement at all the first time wind hits them man they would be like devastated it might even put them in shock I'm going to have super strong plants because from a young age, they've been getting hit with a little bit of wind. So I'm preparing them to be strong and take a little bit of stress and abuse for early training that's coming up. I'm, I'm getting my plants ready. Did we? All right. So uh, let's skip that one right now. Let's do the Athena giveaway first. Athena's going to give away a, Athena's going to give away a jug of that stuff. 
this is a USA. This is only for the people in the USA. This giveaway for Athena giveaways. But yeah, they're gonna give away um a one gallon, one gallon jug of the. It's gonna be IPM for you in the states if you're interested in this stuff, which is good for like just preventive maintenance. Like I said, Athena is a decent company. They do a lot of research. They do a lot of work at like trying to figure out their product. I'm I'm I've used them before with really good success actually. So I'm excited to use them and like you should be too trying that shit out for sure. So type in Athena in the comment section for your chance to win that. And good luck to everybody. Um where is the ancient alien from? That's a green Bodhi genetic. Uh, Green Green Bodhi has a new some new stuff coming out. Uh, it's a feminized seed called Ancient Alien, and he has another one that I'm, I'm running called. Uh, um, I think it's shit. I forget the name of it right now. Oh, I have it written down. Georgie Pie, Georgie Pie and Ancient Aliens from Green Bodhi. <clears throat> I'm scrogging autos right now and they're doing real good. Have you ever scrogged autos and any good tips for me in the last month? Uh, in the last month, you're just going to basically be like kind of watching the colas grow. Uh, there's not much you can do in the last month of scrogging, even with autos because like they're on flower mode now. You don't want to be, you don't want to tuck in your branches during flower. Uh, once they start flowering out, you just got to let them do their thing. But I can give you advice for next time if, you, if you're an auto grower. Uh, what I would do with auto flowers, if I was a scrog auto flowers, I keep my screen even lower. So like almost put it like three or four inches off the top of your pot. Uh, that that way you start scrogging right away. Um, because an auto flower, once you start scrogging and stressing it out, it's going to start to flower right away. Initiating stress to an auto flower usually creates it to want to kind of flower normally. Um, sometimes you get a real strong genetic auto flower that you can like top it, you can bend it over, you can do a whole bunch of stuff to it. it it's going to like, it's going to veg for a good solid month and a half still, and then flower out, which are nice. I want one of those auto flowers that are, that's going to veg for like quite a long time with a lot of stress from scrogging. And then it's going to start to flower, like say in like a month and a half, that'd be great. But I've never had that. I have scrogged an auto flower a few times. And honestly, like each time that I've done it, except for one time I did it by kind of by mistake, I got the wrong seed sent to me. That was Scrog School season number two or number three. I had some auto flowers that were supposed to be feminized and like I scrogged them right out until I realized they were starting to flower under an 18-6 light cycle. And I was like, what the hell's going on with these plants? Why am I starting to see flowers? And then it was like a little bit of a mistake happened. So I... um so then therefore at that moment i just turned it into like a trellis grow so at that point i just stopped tucking and i just watched them they just rise off my screen they grew they grew really nice actually they, they turned out really really well that's because i did early training which is going to be episode not this not the next episode but the following episode so two sundays from now i'm going to be doing early training on my plants that that right there changes it like changes your growing game for you so even if you're not scrogging, just doing early training on your plants is going to maximize your plants. Even if you just have your plants growing in a big open room, it's going to maximize them out just by early training. We'll talk about that when that time comes, episode number seven, probably. Uh, Jeff, what's going on, man? Oh, we got that one. <laughs> All right, let's keep going here. Uh, closet gardener what's going on is there any training necessary before it reaches the trellis net yeah for sure there's lots of training necessary well from the way that i grow like you can grow how, however like there's so many ways of growing right so some people don't train until that happens but i definitely train for like a solid couple weeks before my plants even hit the screen i'm opening up that plant i'm exposing it the light i'm exposing the plant to the light above for a good couple weeks before i even Put any kind of screen on it it's just all about initial training and that's what really that's what really is uh make it or break it it's like the way that you scrog is the way that you've trained in the beginning if you don't have a good training in the beginning then you're not going to have a really 
awesome, nice kind of like a scrog like like this one here kind of thing. Like that's like one plant right there. And that is because I, I early trained it. I created multiple branches at the young age of that plant. So when I did put a screen on, those multiple branches just started growing underneath the screen and creating other side branches. So off of one branch comes like off one branch can come like one, two, three, four, like probably like five or six branches off each side of it. Earlier, later on in Scrog School, like later on in my last defoliation that I do in the flower phase, I will peel off some of those lower nodes that are, that are growing under the branch and then it has to wrap around to reach the screen. I'll take that one right off. I'll take this one right off. I'll take that one right off because I don't want it to come underneath the branch, wrap around, start growing bud at like this stage, come up, hit the screen, grow into the other bud that's beside it. Cause these, the buds don't all just grow together now. Now they're separate. If I have a branch laid down, I'm going to have a bunch of separate buds coming off that branch. But you got to remember that if there's one branch coming off here, there's one branch usually coming off over here and one branch here, one branch over here. Sometimes the branches come off here and then come off the side. Those are nice to work with. But if it comes off the top and one comes off the directly off the bottom, sometimes usually I pull that bottom one off because the screen will get way too cluster fucked. If I just keep everything that comes off this one branch, if I keep it all, that's, that's going to become a mess. So you pull off those bottom ones, let these top ones flourish. But like I said, guys, like that's all going to come within straw school. I don't want to, it's hard for me to explain it all now, but when the time comes, I can use all these cool cameras that I have in this room, position them perfectly on that plant and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Instead of using my arm as a description, I can use a real plant. And like I said, that's going to come normally on my last harvest right before or right into flower. So it's say 20 days into flower. I go underneath my screens and I start removing like little flowers that are under the branches. Like I just said, uh, we'll get into that shit. <laughs> All right, Ali, let's do it. Type Athena for live chats. You guys have like six seconds to type Athena if you never did in this live chat right now. Thanks everyone for coming in. Good turnout today. 540 people in the chats. That's awesome. You guys all just wait until I start getting my hands on the plants and we start really working because that's when I get really excited. Toast the most. You're the winner. That's amazing. You need to, you need to email giveaways at acinfinity.com. Take a screenshot. Oh, no, you don't. You need to email me at northernscroggergmail.com. Oh. At northernscrogger at gmail.com, you need to email me for the Athena giveaway. And I hope that you live in the United States, because if you don't, then we're going to be doing another one next week for Athena. So yeah, send me an email, northernscrogger at gmail.com. Much appreciated. Take a screenshot of your YouTube channel. Awesome. Okay, so you know what? We, we even have giveaways. I, I, should, I should start getting through these things, because I'm real slow at them. We have two from AC Infinity. Or we have two, we have one left from AC Infinity plus one in the live chats. You know what, guys? We're going to do two in the live chats this episode. There's going to be a Seedsman giveaway in the live chats this episode, and there's going to be an AC Infinity giveaway in the live chats episode. So there's going to be a couple packs of seeds, and then there's going to be a $100 gift card for a, for a comment after this episode airs. So usually AC Infinity does one. That's amazing. AC Infinity or Seedsman is going to do one too. So let's let's do another let's do a season one now, Ali. If, if you want um, the season in the, in the comments, guys, and uh, we'll get that one rolling. As I look at another comment, then just get on answering shit here. Um, I have a question. I have a question. Sweet, catch you reloading, reloading. Okay, yeah. So are you playing like Call of Duty or something? I have a question. Uh, how would you dry in a two by two? Okay, uh, how would I dry in a two by two? Well, that depends on what your outside humidity and temperatures are, right? Because you, what you need to do is get that little two by two to the correct kind of temperatures that you want. So it could be like 60 degrees Fahrenheit or say 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever kind of heat you want. You can like, it's like a range, right? Like some people prefer high heat, low low humidity some guys some people say 60 60 bang on i kind of aim for 60 60 but then my shit is normally like like 57 65 it's never like 60 60 it's always fluctuates right 
but you need to somehow get that little two by two to be within the zone. Um, a good way to do that, if you have a cold space, is to buy one of these little heaters right here that I just set up. Even buy that humidifier right here. I think they make a smaller humidifier. I think they make a little bit of a smaller one. Those things will go right into the, that little two by two tent. Perfect. Get it to where you want it. Get a little tiny fan in there that's kind of moving on like the lowest setting because a two by two, you don't need a fan just blasting because that's going to dry your plants out quick. It's going to make them taste like shit. You just want a little bit of air movement blowing on the floor. So as light of air movement as you can get, almost especially in that size of a tent, it's a little bit of a just, I don't know how to describe it, like a, like a fart. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of air blowing on the floor just to create some air movement and if you want you can be even get even crazier and get a exhaust fan that's going to slowly suck out a little bit of air as some air is coming in so basically you just want to get that that space set up to the right temperatures and don't have a light on make sure it's nice and dark that's really important uh just ordered banana jealousy any tips yeah banana jealousy watch scroll school season three i had it on this screen right here Banana Jealousy was under this screen right here. And it was one of the best plants I grew, actually, I thought. The way that it scrogged, it scrogged really, it scrogged really nice. It had those even nice colas coming off the screen. Uh, there's a few people that, that have grown it uh, during, during with me and after now. And they all really like it as well. Everyone that has grown it said they really like it. Uh, it, it grows like lots of trichomes, nice and dense. It's a good plant for sure. I love banana jealousy. I think I, I still have some of the hash that I made. Okay, here's a question from Lindsay. Any tips for scrogging one plant in a rectangular space rather than a square? I have a two by four. Any tips for scrogging one plant? Yeah, I have a two by four. See, that's different. That's when you might want to like, you might have to take like a little bit longer of a bed time. And you might have to like prune your plant up to like send two main stalk branches going like you might have to like send two main stalk branches kind of heading one heading that way in the four by four and one heading this way in the four by four because it's a two by four then you want to kind of just have like say two like two or, or three so you're gonna have to like prune your plant real nice and uh just try to just try to veg for a little bit longer create two or three or four maybe four nice stalks that are going to start going opposite directions Prune everything else that's coming the other way. You might not be able to obviously make it the whole length of the tent because the two the two foot side is going to fill up quick compared to the four foot side, right? So it's a, so you might want to actually grow like two plants in there. Put one on this side, one on this side, short veg. Then it's going to be a smaller space for those two plants to fill. I wouldn't try to do it with one plant. It just might not be able to fill at all with one plant unless you keep on like pruning but you gotta remember like, every time you prune you're gonna have two tops that come off that it's just gonna keep on growing more and more so like you think you're trimming it down but it's growing more unless you put the flower real fast so yeah i put two plants to be hard with one you just won't fill the whole space up because like i said your two foot sides will fill up a lot quicker than the four foot sides um here's a good question and i'll be honest about it what happened to your other lights and what made you change over to AC Infinity? AC Infinity wants to community community AC Infinity wants to support the community a lot more, even content creators like myself. Um, the other lights I was using were, are great lights. Like I'm not gonna say they're not bad lights, but they don't run giveaways like AC Infinity does, that they don't like show support like AC Infinity does. They don't have a whole bunch of new different cool products like AC Infinity has coming out, like all these tents, these heaters, like the humidifier, these cool, like these fans now, the which like you can get like the new one. If you have the old style fans, they can just send them and get it right back. Those kind of things right there is why I kind of switched to AC Infinity, to be honest with you. So uh, the support is there um, for myself and for Strong Nation and for the community. They've shown a lot of love. So I, their shit is just as good as everybody else's, basically. So I want to be part of be part of AC Infinity Crew, man. I want to I want to represent their stuff and and use it because honestly, I, I've had nothing but good experiences with their equipment as well. So that's pretty much it. 
What videos do you have on cloning a photo period to do a scrog of clones of a big single bud similar to what you're talking about last week? What videos do you have on cloning a photo period to do a scrog of clones of big single buds? Are you talking about like a sog, like a, like a, like a sog grow compared to a scrog grow? Um, I've never done a sog grow. Like I, I've never, I have a plant limit, so I can't grow like say 15 plants and like uh, 10 by 10 tent or, or however size you would do that. I was just, I was basically, I think we were talking about like the differences between scrogging and sogging, which is S-O-G. Um, and I was just talking about the plant limit. You can have a lot more plants doing it that way, shorter veg time. But then you got to water each individual pot and it becomes a little bit of a pain in the butt, but... I don't, I don't have any videos of it. You just gotta search SOG versus SCROG and you'll get lots of information for sure. Hey, thanks, Norma. I appreciate it. Uh, shout out Norma G in the chat. It's always helping everybody in the community. If you want to talk about community support, that guy right there, man. That's a, He has a lot of community support for everybody. Everybody. He, like, I even see him in channels. Like, I'll be watching someone's channel that, like, I would never think he'd be in there. All of a sudden, Norma G comments, like, what? Norma G? <laughs> What's up, man? You're everywhere. So, yeah, thank you, Norma. I appreciate you. And a lot of us, all of us people do that, that go live and, and create events. You're always there in the background, man. Like, you're always there helping. So, thank you. <clears throat> all right. Let's, uh, are we doing the Seasman giveaway? Let's run that one now. Okay, this, this is a worldwide giveaway. So, good luck, everybody. Oh, do you know what? That is fucking cool, man. That is pretty cool. And I'm sure, like, at least how many people are in here watching right now? Okay, we got 580 people watching. I like put that screen back up for a second. 580 people watching. This, this, this guy probably has like. 10 people in his room right now or like maybe five maybe a few people maybe he's by himself tonight because he works tomorrow but i don't know man the, the, this guy he was in the, sh the high soda guys you guys saw him in the ac infinity after dark show last week he came in there with a group of his friends representing his brand and uh just doing awesome community shit so do you know what this is kind of cool that you won man do you know what because what goes around comes around you're also supporting the community you shared i think you shared scroll school on your instagram stories today now you're here and now you just want an awesome season package so that's pretty sweet um i need you to email competitions at seedsman.com so like i said that's competitions at seedsman.com and all you need to do is just take a picture of your of your um youtube profile page man congratulations that's awesome i'm happy for you guys i was kind of shocked like when, when you see those like when you see that you're like whoa that it's just weird how that shit goes around because I was just watching you on the show that I was just on. So that's pretty cool. Congratulations. All right, ACI. Let's do the ACI one next. We have one more of those to do. And then and then that's it for giveaways. Because the other two are going to be in the comment section at the end of this video. You guys are going to please leave a like and leave a comment. And then AC Infinity and Steven is going to pick a winner of the comments to, uh, to win a, another pack of seeds a couple packs of seeds actually and a whole bunch of other cool merch and then a hundred dollar gift card from ac infinity toast the most is this the winner for the aci alley let's toast the most okay we haven't drawn the ACI one yet. Ali's figuring it out. It's all good. Give her a minute. I, I should have just done it all like in a row, maybe. But it is what it is. Let's pick another question as she works on that. Um, how do you get rid of and control fungus gnats? Well, you know what? Like I just kind of explained it in this video. That's how I'm gonna kind of do it from now on. Is just is just control it that way. So yeah, so we got 117 entries. So you guys gotta all start typing it again. ACI in the live comments and uh, so watch that baby go up. That's $100 gift card. So thanks, Ali, for getting that figured out for us. 
Yeah, you know what? But there's also so many other ways. Um, you can release nematodes if you're in the living soil bed. You can use beneficiary bugs. Uh, there's so many different kind of... Like, I, I have beneficial bugs in here, which are like predators. Um, I also have, like, nematodes that, is, that, that are in my soil. So I basically just do, like, a like a leaf spray, a foiler spray on my living soil bed. And then once these plants get bigger here and I put them in their pots, final pots, and they start growing, I'll, I'll do the same spray underneath the leaves. First, when you spray, you want to, the first time you spray plants, you want to aim underneath the plant and then spray. That's the first thing you want to do. You don't want to spray the top first because that's just going to make the plant droop. Then it makes it harder to get under the leaves. So you walk up to your plant, like I said, yeah, and just direct it and spray upwards spray all underneath it and then hit the top don't start at the top start at the bottom and work your way up so it's best to start at the soil it's good to spray a, lay a little bit on your soil then just work up the stock and then just work up the plant and then back down the plant that's how i do it okay sweet but I, i've never used like a plant wash like that i've always just used like a foiler feeding um i've never actually use something that like that stuff doesn't feed my plants at all it just it just actually washes them cleans them up and it just helps control bugs any kind of pests i shouldn't say bugs just pests okay um how do you tell when they're ready to transplant okay how do i tell when the plants are ready to transplant that's a great question so what i do when i normally want to figure out i'll throw this camera for a little bit Okay, so when I want to figure out how to, this plant, I want to transplant this plant, I'm usually going to look down at my plant like a bird's eye view. And once I see that plant overgrowing the, the cup that it's in, or the pot, little pot, once I pretty much once I don't see that pot anymore and these leaves are all growing outside the container, then I know that its root system is pretty well built in there. Um, that's, that's when I transplant. I just look down and like, holy shit, that thing is like really covering the whole pot. It's definitely time to transplant. That's pretty much how I do it. This one, I don't even want to pull it out. I only want to do it, but I guarantee you that if I pulled that plant out of here and look at its roots, it would, it would have like a lot of roots in there. But at the same time, it, all the soil would probably fall apart and I'd just make a big mess and it would suck to do that live on camera right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's, it's pretty pretty easy just look do a bird's eye view of your plants look down at them once you see all those leaves growing over the edges of your container then you know it's pr it's pretty close to transplanting time that's how i that's how i was taught and that's just what i stick to and that's just how i do it i'm sure there's more scientific ways that other people do it too but that's just how i do it um what's a full watering look like uh, right for right now, if you're talking about my seedlings, a full watering to me right now at this stage is I, like, for example, today I watered these plants. Uh, they were pretty dry. I waited till my soil cups, I waited till these things were pretty light. I'm like, okay, they're, they're definitely light, light. So I just go until I see like a lit, like right now, I just go until I see a little drips coming out the bottom. I don't want it to be pouring out the bottom. I just at this stage of this plant's growth, I just want to make sure that the whole cup is wet because it, it has enough roots now to absorb that water. And then it's gonna start reaching down in here into the cup to find more water. So I don't wanna just water this top layer at this stage. I wanna water the whole thing. But for example, at this stage of the plant's life, I only wanna water just a little bit. I just wanna get it kind of damp in this area. I don't want to like soak this thing until runoff comes out the bottom on this on this particular size of a plant. I just want it to be damp right in the top this much of its root zone, this nice little dampness. And I spray the leaves. That's what's really going to help it build the roots is me spraying the leaves each day on this plant. And then putting the plastic bag over it to trap in humidity. That's the difference. Uh, overwatering and underwatering is so important and key to growing and starting your plants. A lot of mistakes happen. Even look at me. I made mistakes this run on a few of my plants because I overwatered. It happens. It happens all the time. I make mistakes all the time. Like I said, there's no such thing as perfect. Nobody's perfect. 
I make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. I learned from my mistakes with my new bud cups. I got to really judge the weight now and this and kind of just get used to that. Get used to this instead of being used to this because this feels a lot different than this. And my mind is trained to this, but now it's being trained on this. <laughs> if any of that makes sense, but it does to me. Okay, so we're, are we at the ACI giveaway? Three hundred seventy-seven. We got six hundred and seventeen people in here. That's amazing, guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys all being in here. That's that's awesome. Uh, we're doing this last ACI gift giveaway. You have, to, well, I say, you have ten seconds to get into it. Uh, ACI in the comment section. And then Ali's gonna spin that. Johnny, thank you so much, Johnny, for being here. I really appreciate it. You need to you need to email Ace, uh, giveaways at acinfinity.com to claim your prize, and make sure you use that on 420. And make sure you use the code SCROG to stack up on it, man, and save 20% plus the sale. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this, we're going to wrap it up tonight for Straw School. Like I said, next episode, we're looking at transplanting. And then uh, and then we're going to be getting into it. A lot of, All the tucking's going to come. I'll be doing some topping, too, eventually here. Everything's going to start happening. So, yeah, thank you all. Hope you had a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you all in the Discord right now. I'm going to go in there have a session with you guys. Uh, you can show me your plants. We all chit-chat in there. It's called the Detention Zone in the Discord. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm just going to grab a drink, and then I'll see you guys on over. Everyone, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Keep on tucking.